Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for the introduction there, I appreciate it. Um, my name is David Burton, and I'm a technical specialist for Diatech. So, my presentation for the next 15 minutes is primarily on project coordination and flash management uh, and how all this have uh, approached this using cloud technology. So, primarily I'm going to look at Autodesk cloud technology um, around the lines of BIM 360, uh, particularly looking at Glue, and also looking at how it interacts with existing methodologies for coordination and flash management. So Glue, for those of you who people don't know, uh, is a cloud-based technology which allows coordination and collaboration of multidisciplinary models into a centralized federated model. That can be done um, at any stage during the process and can be updated uh, at any point in time. That also means that other members of the team who don't have the existing design tools used to create the information also have access to the latest versions of the model and can redline and mark up uh, information to collaborate with the actual model itself. So, how do we normally do collaboration? So at the moment, using existing technologies, everything is uh, decentralized. Things are moving through email, through FTP, things of that nature. What we're looking at now is with the advancement of cloud technology and the ability for multiple teams to centralize their information, we're looking at putting all the digital information related to projects into a centralized form. So, like I said at the start, one of the technologies, and uh, the main technology for this is BIM 360 Glue. Now, BIM 360 Glue um, allows, through a cloud, web, web, cloud interface or through a desktop interface, access to cloud stored centralized models. That information then allows anybody virtually anytime, anywhere access to the latest version of the centralized and federated model. Why that's important? is it allows to do some extra and some interesting workflows. So for example, we can now start to promote the ability for multiple team members to start doing some real-time clash detection. As the model is maturing on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis, designated members as well as extended design teams can now start to clash against each other at a, right, at a very earlier stage. It also allows to reduce the coordination cycle for the extended design teams. So information back and forward is promoted at an earlier stage, way before it was in existing methodologies. So typical coordination week, three main members of the team are working on their individual models. That information is passed on to the BIM coordinator, who then has to disseminate and work through that information. It could be Monday morning. That information is then passed back to the relevant design team members to work on in terms of changes and issues. They might then decide on a Wednesday that they've done enough and they're going to move it back to the BIM manager. And then the BIM manager may take a day to work on that. And then the same process ends up with each of the team members sitting down and going through all the issues of the project. When you include BIM 360 Glue into this process, because it's a centralized model, all team members can work on that model and coordinate at a very earlier stage. So the structural MEP guys, the structural design, and then the other members of the team can all work in a collaborative form throughout the week, at any point during the week, which means they get Friday off to go to the park, which would be nice. So let's look at an example of where this is being used in reality and what the actual differences have been in that project. So for example, on a traditional um, project, total model versions posted to the collaboration site was between 0 and 20. On, eight, on a BIM 360 Glue project, it was nearly 140. And that's not 140 different versions, that's 140 variations in the model because it's constantly getting updated and changed. It's not periodically getting pushed at random times during the week. If you look at the bottom here, comparisons for week weekly modeling activity, we can see that in a, a Glue, um, based plot project versus traditional project, you can see there's a lot more activity going on. Why? Well, simply because there's a lot more communication and collaboration going on in the day-to-day, hour-to-hour process. People are waiting for the information drops or back and forward through email or FTP, or people going away to work on something to bring it back. It's constantly back and forward in a much regular process. So, Glue is part of a larger ecosystem. 
So, Pen360 Glue sets the pre-construction leading into the construction execution phase. It ties into the likes of layout, which allows you to verify and validate information against the digital model with the as-built uh, as conditions on site. The field will allow you to then move into the commissioning and handover phase by taking the same information and embellishing it with the as information information requirements. So commissioning, handover, uh, asset management, asset information requirements can be built into the system, allowing the information to mature at a very fast pace, all with the end goal in sight. Plan allows you then to take the construction plan and pass through the same process through a cloud-based technology. So rather than having to sit in a, a site office with lots of posting notes everywhere, everybody has digital access to the construction plan via iPad, through a phone, through web portal, all through a digital form. So, as I said at the start, I'm going to look at Glue and I'm going to look at some coordination workflows. So Glue sits between the stages between pre-construction and early stages of construction execution. And it allows you to get that coordination and collaboration working a lot quicker. So, there's a couple of business objectives that clients who look at Glue want to try and fix. Improved communication, equally important. Save time, hours per user per day. Resolve more clashes before construction starts. Again, the clash management is a critical uh, pitch point for a lot of projects. How do we mitigate that? How do we cut down on risk? Re realize itself on site. Spend less time design review meetings, always good. The more you can do in a collaborative form without having to wait to define points in time where you all have to sit around the table, it's equally important and compress the design, cycle, the design review cycle and give access to the design team and to the latest version of the design review model. Real-time, real-time access is a key big element in this. But how do you measure it? So, the key thing to measure in any platform is how often and how well it's adopted by its end users, what clashes were unresolved at the start of construction, and consistently detect and, resol and, and resolution of design issues. So clashes kind of fall in different things. Bad design, bad drafting, and just bad management. So being able to mitigate some of those things at a very early stage by giving people ownership of their workflow is crucial with the platform success. And lastly, fitting on existing processes. Whatever technology you roll out, it has to be bent or matched to the will of the process that you have established. You should not, the processes should not have to change because of the technology you roll out. And Glue is very reticent to that. So here's the weekly design review cycle. The main discipline teams create a merge model. We review the model on Monday morning. Monday afternoon, we set up a weekly design review meeting. And the rest of the week, the team spends the week trying to fix all the issues we found on Monday morning. If you look at Glue, at the top there is that same uh, workflow broken down. But with Glue, rather than having to wait for defined points in time where you can get information back and forward, as each discipline, each member of the team is updating the base model, the federated model, the coordinated model has been updated in real time as well. So each discipline and each member of discipline can update and clash multiple times throughout the week. So one of the big elements in any platform is the ability to link it to your existing tools. So BIM 360 is completely integrated into Revit, AutoCAD and AutoCAD based products, and now this works. And depending on the product, we have the ability to glue the model up in our base design tools, and we also have the ability to link to our glue model directly from Navis Manage. So it's not having a duplicate model locally and a glue model that you have to constantly keep going back and forward to, you link to the same central repository. Anything you change in Navis or any information you add in Navis can be automatically synced up to the glue model. So, this clicker is going to work, I'll try it anyway. So, one of the key elements in Glue is, from a licensing standpoint, user access is done by a user by user basis. Permissions, again, are broken down by company and by end user. But it's a, it's a cloud-based technology. So, you can assign it by Autodesk ID, uh, via uh, uh, email, and log into the system. So, this space here. So I can log into Glue. 
and I can see my example projects I have open. So the interface is pretty clean. So I can pick a project to work on. From that project, I can start looking at markups, clashes, and views. Here, when I look at the project, I can see what merge models I've combined together, and I can also look at individual models um, separately. I can also see the activity on the project, so there's a complete audit trail, so it will tell me exactly what's been done, when it's been done, who uploaded what, who added a clash, who made a change. So here I'm just looking at the combined model. So, and now I'm just going to break down and look at the different disciplines. So, it's not a huge, complex interface. The technology and the complexity of the technology is done in the back end. It's the intelligence between the relationships between objects, between models, between disciplines, between companies. So, I'll jump forward there a bit and look at clashing. So, traditional methodology would be designated people within a team would clash and manage. Now with Glue, individual teams who have access, individual members of those teams who have access can clash just as well as anybody else in the team. There's no having to designate one particular person. So in Glue, we can look at the individual models and we can pick separate elements from them and we can clash against each other. So I can do it by floor or I can do it by model. So here I'm just clashing some of the floor framing objects with some of the HVAC. So again, all the information I built in Revit is all segmented within Glue. So I want to just clash with different elements. You can do that as well as clash between one drawing type versus another. So I give the clash a name <clears throat> and I click on Find Clashes. So what it will do is it will go through based on the tolerance value that I've set and it will analyze the model. Then it will come back with a report as well as these clash points. Each clash point is given its own designated ID and the magnitude of the clash. It will also tell me what I clashed in terms of the files themselves. Now, one of the nice elements of this is, once I have my clash, I can go through each one individually, or I can go through by group, and I can separate them out, I can change the coding of them, but I can also then create markups within the product, but I can also assign it to individual users within my team. They'll get an email, and they'll also be able to go in and view the clash. Now, where it comes interesting is when we start looking at things like Revit, where I take that clash that I've just generated, assign it to a user, and now I can actually assign it. I can now take the same clash, assign it to a user. So here we have a piece of ducting that's passing through a wall. It has its own unique ID which is ID10. Here, I can assign a markup, I can pass a comment, or I can assign it. So I've assigned it to someone. They open Revit, and if they go to the BIM360 add-ins, there's an option here called Clash Pinpoint. By clicking on Clash Pinpoint, it will go and find any clashes assigned to me, and it will open the relevant objects within Revit. Okay? So as I'm delegating clashes to the relevant people, the relevant disciplines, the relevant design team members, I can now then open the same clashes within Revit, reconnect my systems model, and I can essentially then work on fixing that clash. Create the mold, glue the model back up to glue, rerun the same clash, and I can verify that the clash has disappeared, and I can set the clash to close. At no point in open that manage. Now, there'll be certain clashes that I would obviously have to pass on to manage for the clash coordinator or the coordination team to look at specifically. They may not be just drafting problems, it could be specific design problems that require the whole team to collectively sit down and fix. But there may be ones like this that I can fix pretty quickly. They're just a drafting problem or a small issue. And why is that important? 
Well, it's important because you're not dealing with a large volume of clashes at set periods of time. Certain things can be um, mitigated and removed from the process. You know where the main ones that require interaction can also be used. So, this is an example of what Blue, Navis and uh, Revit can do collectively together. We're over in stand 17, we'll be there all day. If anyone wants to come over and actually spend some more time with the products and talk about more, please feel free. My email is there. And if anyone wants to copy the presentation, I'll be more happy to share it as well. Also, we have a presentation up the stairs in the daughter room uh, with Ken Stowe from Autodesk, who's going to be talking about BIM and uh, ROI, BIM for construction. So that's only at half past one, I believe. So it's only at half past one up the stairs. Uh, feel free to uh, have a register, please feel free to go up and uh, enjoy that presentation. Thank you.